Hello everyone, let's begin for 3-9-2018, the Hindu analysis. The first news item, US-India may not sign the security pact at 2 plus 2 meet. So this is basically with India and USA coming up with a 2 plus 2 dialogue, which is on September 6th. So the announcement, what they made is that the in-principle agreement between the two sides, that is on the Comcasas, communication compatibility and the security agreement, but its signing is doubtful. So this is what the official has been saying, that the signing might be doubtful between the two countries, that's India and USA. And you have like who are the eminent personalities who are doing up with the meetings and who's been taking from part from the US counterpart and when it comes to India, who are the people who have been part of it. So here you have the basic. The next one, NGT steps in to conserve guards. This is with respect to the National Tribu Green Tribunal. The six Western Guard states, which is including Kerala, have been restrained from the National Green Tribunal from giving environmental clearance to activities that may adversely impact the eco-sensitive areas, that's the zones of the mountain ranges. So here the panel which has directed that the extent of the eco-sensitive zones of the Western Guards, which was notified by the central government earlier, this should not be reduced in the view that Kerala had floods. Irrespective of taking the issue with respect to Kerala floods, there should not be any idea of reducing the eco-sensitive zones of the Western Guards. So this was a panel which has been directed right now. And the tribunal bench is also put up its order, noted that any alteration in the draft notifications of the zones may seriously affect the environment. So this is especially with respect to the recent incidents in Kerala. So we have the principal bench which permitted the Ministry of Environment and Forest and the Climate Change to republish the draft notification because this was earlierly expired in August 2018-26. So they're saying that with the draft which has been abolished right now, we need to re-publish them and ensure that the eco-sensitive zones are not being reduced at any cost. And here the principal bench of the tribunal which noted that the ecology of the Western Ghats region was under serious stress. And this has also highlighted the fact that the Western Ghats region was one of the richest biodiversity areas which needed to be conserved. So that's the main concerns to why the bench has been trying to focus more and it's saying that there should not be any sort of a reduction or alteration when it comes to the eco-sensitive zones. The next one, Lalit Modi fraud case stuck. So this is with respect to the Lalit Modi by the center for the past nine months. It has been sitting or the references from the Tamil Nadu government rec recommending the transfer of an alert cheating case against the former IPL chief. Lalit Modi is an IPL chief and this has to get transferred to the CBI. So this was one of the requests which has been put forth. So here yeah, there was no such development of any consequences in terms of the criminal investigations. There was no enforcement agency so far which has pushed Mr. Lalit Modi's extradition. And the crime bank branch of the state police which has registered this case which was on October 13, 2010 following a complaint by then BCCI Honorary Secretary N. Srinivasan against Mr. Lalit Modi and six others. So this was based on the FIR and also the enforcement director that is ED launched a case under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act in December 2012. So this charge sheet what was being filed was almost a delayed part because this particular aspect of getting booked under the FIR was based on the money laundering case where ED was not able to do anything or it was not able to move further because the police had not filed any charge sheet against the same. So it had taken almost like seven years for the police to come to a conclusion that they had no territorial jurisdictions. So now the CBI, CID, sought for, they had actually sorted for more legal op opinion on the basis of which it requested for the transfer of the cases to the CBI as well. So now the FIR which has alleged that Mr. Lalit Modi and other accused entered into a conspiracy to sign the, the contracts on behalf of the BCCI with the entities allegedly managed by some of them. This has committed irregularities of illegal gratification and cheated the BCCI on several instances. So this was the entire issue with respect to Lalit Modi getting into the conspiracy right now and also the FIR which was being signed and this is believed to tune almost like 425 crores rupees 125 crores and 200 crores and 3.5 crores so these were about the concepts right now so this is about it 
And the next one, audits to track construction workers' benefits. So this, big, this is with respect to the social audit, which has been happening in a pilot projects. This to check with the construction workers' welfare boards, which are registering the workers and giving them the benefits. And this is to weed out all the non-workers registered illegally and also to schedule this will begin in Rajasthan and Delhi this particular week. So here the Labour Ministry, they also issued a draft framework for the social audit on the implementation of building and other construction workers, that is the Regulation of Employment and Conditions of Service Act 1996. It is basically called as BOCW in accordance with the Supreme Court's orders. So here the construction industry, you should know that it is India's second largest employer with estimates which is between 5 to 7 crore workers in the sectors of whom less than half are being registered. So this is India's second largest employer which is giving an employment to almost nearly like 5 to 7 crores workers in this particular sector. And what is that they are adding towards the social audit is that the main aim is to cover all districts every two years. And the pilot projects will be done in Delhi, that is Bhavana Ward and also had to be finalized blocks in the Udaipur districts. So here the persons will visit the construction sites and areas where the workers are living and also check many of them are being registered in sense basically to check like how many of them are registered with the welfare boards and this was also one of the convener of the national that is nccl that is national campaign committee for central legislation on construction labor so where are these particular laborers children's uh, are they getting the scholarship if yes and what are the other benefits which has been applied to them like the pensions maternity and to what extent they have to wait to get these pensions and the other sectors so these would be the main areas focused when it comes to the social audit and this will also team up find workers who have not registered and try to find the reasons that have been prevented them from getting the registrations as well so here the directions to why the event started out with this was with respect to the Supreme Court noted that the center and the state had floated with impunity where the previous directions to implement the BOCW and directed that the social audits be conducted to hold the governments accountable. And at the same time they said that if the government has not been held accountable there is no point in making the structures. So this is about it. The next one, US to cancel dollar three hundred million aid to Pakistan. This is with respect to the US military has planned to cancel the three hundred million in aid to Pakistan due to the Islamabad's lack Islamabad's lack of decisive actions. This is with support to the South Asia strategy. So this was one of the main reasons to why the Defense Department of US has plan to cut down the aid which has been given to Pakistan that is 300 million. So now here the White House also believes that the Pakistan's inter-service intelligence agencies and other military bodies have long helped fund and harm the Taliban for the ideological reasons but also the counterizing Indian influence in Afghanistan. So this was one of the reasons to why the aid is being not being done and at the same time the counter that pakistan is also trying to convey the message that it's trying to weed out completely the terrorism in pakistan and also going against the group militants which is happening in pakistan so pakistan has done the bare minimum to appear with the response to our request and concerns over the lack of action by islamabad against the militant group still persist so this was one of the aspects to what the U.S. is trying to justify on cancelling the 300 million aid to Pakistan. The next one, investors plans to SEBI at six year high. So this is basically with respect to the complaints which is getting registered. So here we have the investors complaints against the listed firms and market intermediaries have touched a six year high even as SEBI has raised its pace of disposing such complaints to bring down the overall pendency. So side by the complaints which is also getting in increased by the investors and the SEBI is also trying to dispose as much as possible so that the overall pendency of the cases can be solved at the earliest. But this time it has received 43,131 investor complaints against the market intermediaries in the year 2017 and 18. So this is like uh, what they can do the investors can use the SEBI's online score platform to register the complaints against the intermediaries such as might be the st stock brokers 
or might be the listed firms, mutual funds, depositories, registrars, credit rating agencies and the stock exchanges. So either scores also allows the investors to directly lodge a complaint online, but the SEBI uploads a physical complaint as well so that they can get the overall status which is being reflected and also includes all investor grievances. So an investor can lodge a complaint within three years from the date of the cause of the complaint. So within three years from the date of the cause of the complaint, the investor can go lodge a complaint with respect to the SEBI's online score platform. So here you have the details with respect to the complaints. So here you have from 2018-19 from where and it got a dip somewhere in 2012-13 that was 42,411. After that, so this is a peak that is after six years, it is 43,131 which is getting increased over the time. So this is about it. The next, Mauritius tops India's FDI charts again. So this with respect to the Mauritius, which has been remained the top source of foreign direct investments into India in the year 2017 and 18, which was being followed by Singapore. So whereas the total FDI, which has stood at 37.36 billion in the financial year, and there is a marginal rise over 36.31 billion recorded in the previous fiscal, that is in 16-17, according to the RBI data. So this is big. This is with respect to the RBI data, which is showing that the Mauritius was still remained as a top source of foreign direct investments into India. So the total part of the FDI from Mauritius was dollar thirteen point four one billion. Singapore's from nine point that is nine point two seven from six point two seven or something. Netherlands it is declined actually because with respect to last year it was three point two three billion. But this year it is only 2.67 billion. So the manufacturing sector which has witnessed a substantial decline that is 7.06 billion against 11. So the earlier they had used to get was 11.97 billion but right now it is 7.06 billion and the communication services which actually rose to 8.8 .8 billion in the financial year 18 from 5.8. The retail and the wholesale trade also shot up to 4.47 billion that is financial services also rose to 4.7 billion from 3.73 which is marginally good and the fact that these sectors accounted for more than 50 percent of the total fdi that is 37.36 billion in the 2017 and 18 so which is reflecting the global interest in the new areas so which means that out of this dollar 37.36 billion these are the entire coverage to how it has been split across and including online marketplace and financial technologies so which means that apart from all these things it is also including the market places that's online marketplaces and the financial technologies so this is about it and the next one financial savings are up but cash is king again so this with respect to the households which have shifted their savings so basically what they're trying to say is that the change which had happened in billion between 2017 and 2018 all financial assets which have got increased the currencies which have got increased the bank deposits which have got decreased over the time and the insurance which is decreased pf pension funds which is marginally fine small savings which is good shares and debentures which have increased and all financial liabilities which also been increased so here you have the financial year 18 where the households went right back to the holding cash in their mattresses and the shares and debentures was one category of financial savings that saw a significant jump in the financial year 18. So here they are talking about the different segments may have reacted differently to falling rates as shares and cash groups both saw a rise and new loans taken shot up to 2.4 percentage in disposal of income when compared to 4 percent in financial year 18. So this is about it. So basically that Indian households are traditionally known to spirit away their surpluses in land property and gold depriving the economy of capital for more productive uses so therefore this is a data which has been presented by the rbi that's the latest annual report which shows the household sharply raised their financial savings in the financial year 18 is cause for the celebrations and the cross financial savings recorded a jump from 9.1 percent of the gross national disposal income in the financial year 17 to 11.1 percent in the financial year 18 so marginally which is really good and the highest reading in the last seven years so basically the entire column you have without your so you should know that it's comparatively doing better when compared to the 2017 annual report of rpm this is about it the next one why is public credit registry important so this is like very often seen in the news so the public credit registry is an information which is a repository that collates all 
loan information of individuals and also the corporate borrowers. So your credit repository help banks distinguish between a bad and also a good borrower and accordingly offer attractive interest rates to good borrowers at the and also the highest interest rate to the bad borrowers. So you're the good borrower who is paying off the money on time, he'll be getting a very attractive interest. The one who would be called as a bad borrower where he's not been returning the money back to the banks which has been taken as a loan either by individual or the corporate borrowers, they would be getting up with a high interest rate. So here the PCI will address the issues such as information asymmetry, improve the access to credit and also the strength in the credit culture among the consumers so this will also help raise india's rank in the global ease of doing business index so there's a role toward the pcr place and the panel which has been there it is making a proposal that the committee has suggested it should capture all loan information and borrowers be able to access their own history so that the data is being made available to the stakeholders such as banks on the need to know on what it has been done and also to have protection when it comes to the data privacy. So you should know that why the PCR is necessary because the credit information to whatever has been available, these are available in multiple systems in bits and pieces, not in one window. So as the data which has been borrowing from the banks or non-banking financial companies or the corporate bonds or the debentures from the market, external commercial borrowings among others are not available in one data repository. So that the PCR will help capture all the relevant information about a borrower across different borrowing products. So that's the main concept to why we need to have the PCR so that the integrations can be uh, stopped and all can be brought under one particular ambit called one single window so it can flag early warnings on asset quality by tracking the performance on the other credits as well so what is the role of pcr in other countries so the pcr in other countries now include other transactional data such as payments to utilities like the power and also the telecom for retail consumers and trade credit data for businesses so here the regularity in making payments to utilities and trade creditors provides an indication of the credit quality of such customers so this is, a perf this is how the performance of the PCR is in there with the other countries. So this is about it. Next one, UN begins talks and treaty to protect the imperiled high sea. So this is with respect to United Nations which has kicked off the talks on 2020 treaty that would regulate the high seas which is covering uh, half the planet it which is lacking an adequate environmental pollution. Though the high seas are covering half of the planet but there is no proper adequate facilities or we're not having a proper environmental protection to protect them in return. So the goal is to protect the marine biodiversity and also avoid the further plaguing of the oceans. So here the talks which would be focusing on the high seas and international zone of marine waters which are about 46% of the planet's surface. So this is with respect to 1981 where the UN adopted the convention on the law of the seas but the high seas were completely free from restriction. They didn't focus on the high seas and all states have enjoyed the traditional freedoms of navigation, overflight, scientific research and fishing on the high seas. So here the convention which took play, which came into effect in 1994 without the participation of US. So here the adoptions of the Convention of Law of the Sea was in 1982 but it came into effect in 1994 but still the high seas were free from restrictions and didn't make any sort of arrangements for the restrictions on high seas. At the same time this kick started without the participations of the US. Since then the shipping routes have expanded considerably and the resources of the ocean deep have arose significant instead whether by fishing or by mineral extradition. So which means that the shipping routes have been expanded considerably. This is what they're trying to convey you. And the fishing restrictions is that some whale hunting nations like Japan, Iceland and Norway, which are very dependent on them, are expected to be more cautious than others because they fear overly strict fishing restrictions. So if they try, if they try to make any restrictions, which means that the nations which have been dependent would have a really high time. The US is also reticent because they are opposed to all the regulations of marine genetic resources and they, and also they did not ratify the UN Convention on Law of the Sea. So this is also one of the re, uh, area which need to be focused on. And the Russia has also been dragging its feet for a long time. So even Russia has not been a part of the UN adoptions. That is a convention on the law of the sea. So these are the certain areas where they have to look more focused on. So this is about it.
And the question for the day, you need to locate Mauritius, which is having a very good flow of FDI to India. And secondly, the functions of National Green Tribunal, the main functions of the NGT. So these were the important news items for 3rd of September 2018. Thank you.